One place to start really. Congratulations on being on the winning side of the inaugural 100 competition. I mean, has it sunk in yet? Not really. Um, it's a pretty special night Saturday. Um, obviously really delighted to win um, and be a part of such an amazing tournament. It's been a great five weeks. Um, and yeah, it's just been a great time for cricket really. It's good to see so many people getting behind it and it's not really had that platform before. So it's, yeah, it's been awesome to be a part of it. It's, it was quite a story for you as well, because obviously you were the, the wild card pick as well. So you didn't really know you were going until yeah. late. Yeah, no, it happened pretty late on. Um, you know, I, I wanted to get a wild card. That was the goal at the start of the season. And then to, to get picked up, which was yeah, a special feeling. And then I knew how, how big this tournament was going to be and to be a part of it was, was cool. And uh, it's quite, a, quite an interesting story for you as well, obviously, teacher first and then cricket on the side and then you got, signed your first professional contract at 28, so quite late on. I mean, how, how's the journey been for you? Yeah, it's been um, a different journey, I guess. It, it's sort of a, a bit of a lesson for kids out there that things can happen much later. It doesn't have to happen at the age of 18. Um, I've always had the belief that I could get to where I want to get to and got there eventually and, you know, it didn't change the way it felt on Saturday night. It was, it was unbelievable. and. Um, yeah, just chuffed a bits to to obviously sign my first contract. Even though it's 28, it's still plenty of years left, hopefully, and you know, a good opportunity to keep expressing myself. And what have your pupils been like since you've been, you know, all this fame's come about? Have they, you know, been talking about you or saying anything to you? Yeah, I had a few emails. A few of them have slid in on Instagram and messaged me, wishing me good luck. And no, it's been good. I think it's great for them to be able to see, um, you know, I went to Queen's College in Taunton, so for me to, you know achieve my dream it sort of gives them a you know what they could achieve in the future so it's nice for them and yeah they've been really supportive and looking forward to catching up with them at some point and the hundred a new new form of the game as well shorter aimed at you know that family audience and stuff what's it been like to play in yeah it's been unbelievable i, I love the new rules and um, it's a bit quirky it's a bit different it's actually quite simple to understand for the newcomers to the sport um, it's fast paced and the atmospheres and the crowds and I, obviously we've had a tough year both football and cricket have had it pretty tough in the last year. So to be able to play in front of full houses is special and um, doesn't get much more special than playing at Lords in front of a packed house. You just led into what I was going to ask you, really. I mean, yeah, it's been 18 months for both sports of having no fans and stuff. You saw the, the atmosphere on the TV it looked incredible for a lot of the games. But what was it like playing in front of them for the first yeah, time in ages? Yeah, real goosebumps, to be mm. honest. I've not experienced crowds like that before, so um, it was pretty special. Um, but yeah, you sort of look around pinching yourself, um, seeing full houses and, and such a buzz in the grounds. Everyone seems to be right behind it and it's, yeah, it's been awesome. And you had some decent moments in the competition, bowling Tom Banton, I remember, and uh, he took quite a hell of a catch. I recall. What, I mean, what were the standout moments for you other than winning it? I think just being a part of it, to be honest, play, rubbing shoulders with some of the best players in the world. That's pretty surreal for me, um, having been where I was a year ago to now. So playing with the likes of Quinton de Kock and Devon Conway and then star English players like James Vince and Liam Dawson and those. So, yeah, it's been awesome. Um, and then having a head coach in Mahela Jai Warden who's probably one of the best players to ever play the game. Um, so, yeah, that's probably the big standout for me is just rubbing shoulders with those guys. And the great news doesn't stop there. I mean, you're off to Barbados this week to play in the uh, the Caribbean Premier League uh, for the Barbados Royals. I mean, wow, that's it's got to yeah. be something to look forward to. Yeah, that's going to be good fun, I think. Um, I've heard lots of good things. Um, Good friends with Carlos Brathway, um, and he plays with me at Warwickshire, and he's yeah he's told me a lot of good things about the tournament. Looking forward to having some good fun, um, playing. You know, it's going to be a really tough competition, um, and hopefully, well, it's sunny here now, so hopefully it will be sunny when I get there. It looks pretty hot at the moment. And like we discussed earlier, probably not something that you expected to happen come the start of this year either. Yeah, no, definitely not. I mean, you have those goals and ambitions to get to that level, but to, for it to happen so quickly is. Um, pretty surreal and I'm just trying to take it all in at the moment really and um, I'm sure there'll be a time over the next couple of weeks where I can reflect on it and be proud of what I've achieved. Excellent, I guess now we should probably move on to why you're here really um, and Exeter City, I mean you're proudly wearing the home shirt there, yeah, um, we're in. where did your Exeter City supporting journey begin? Well unfortunately it began the, the season we got relegated from the Football League, um, some pretty dark days back then but um, the club's in, obviously in an awesome place at the moment and um, it's great to see the club doing so well both on and off the field and yeah I've been a keen follower of Exeter up and down the country, um, Carlisle away, you name it, <laughs> I'm there so um, big fan of the club and yeah love everything about Exeter City. I guess at least those early moments didn't put you off coming back as well. No yeah I was real young at that point um, but yeah definitely didn't put me off. Um, 
just love the live sport element and the atmosphere here at the park. It's great. Um, feel really close and you feel a part of it as a family club. So, yeah, I've always loved coming here. What have been your sort of standout moments from following the club, would you say? I'd say those League One days are pretty special when we finished eighth in, in League One. That was a great year. I remember following following the team around the country and I think we won away at Charlton 3-1 and that was a, that was an amazing away day. Um, but yeah, there's loads of highlights obviously along the way. We've had some Old Trafford, the 0-0 the Old Trafford, the Liverpool game. Um, so there's loads of highlights, but um, yeah, I've loved every minute of being an Exeter fan. Um, what does being a City fan mean to you as well? You know, is it kind of your local club sort of thing that really means a lot to you? Yeah, so it's the closest closest football league team to where I'm from. I'm from Taunton, um, so started coming down here because of that. And I just love the way the club goes about things, um, producing their own players, um, the ethos and the family orientate, orientated feel of the club. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic club and they do a lot of things right. Um, and it's great to see them doing so well. Hopefully we can have a really good year this year and push on and try and get into League One because I think ultimately all of us as Exeter fans want to see the club club push forward and we've been close the last few years and I don't think we're that far away. I mean, how does being a City fan fit in with your probably hectic schedule of one, being a teacher and two, being a professional cricketer and three, heading off to Barbados soon? Yeah, it's tricky. I, I, you know, it's mixed emotions. Obviously going off to Barbados is great, but it means I miss a few few trips down to the park and away away from home. So yeah, I, I obviously normally miss April and August in terms of football, which is the business business end of the season, which is unfortunate, but I'm looking forward to getting back from Barbados sort of mid-September and getting to plenty of games, hopefully. Um, and you're also, I mean, you're wearing the wristband there now, but you're a strong supporter of the Adam Stansfield Foundation. I mean, yeah. I think you've done some runs in the past for it and things. I mean, what does it mean to you? Yeah, for sure. Adam was obviously um, an amazing footballer, but um, most of all, he, you know, he's a good man and um, really popular around the club and obviously it's such a sad, sad way to lose him. But yeah, I've tried to support the foundation as best as possible, do some amazing work. Um, and yeah, I've done, I've done a half marathon and, and donated plenty of stuff to them. Um, it's great to see them doing so well and raising so much money for such a great cause. We're sat in the Adam Stansfield stand now. You know, his song is sung at every City game. It's great that his memory will live on forever, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. It's, um, it's a special song. I remember um, when we were, at, I think we were at Portsmouth away and we sang it for pretty much 90 minutes. Um, that was a that was a pr real highlight and sort of shows what he means to means to the fans of the club. And uh, you, I think you said that you were here last year for the Tranmere game, which I mean it was a great game to be to. But I mean, what was that experience like? Because it was you know, there was only about 1,500 fans here, but was it great on one hand to be back? But did it feel a little bit surreal? Yeah, I think it was it was really tough for everyone, wasn't it? Without football, so a lot of people need that and you feel like I said touched on it earlier it's a real family club and to not be able to come and support your team is is tough um, and there's only so much I follow you can watch <laughs> um, so no it was great to come back to the park and great to see you know it means a lot to players I can relate to it as a as a cricketer when there's people in the grounds there's just no better feeling than putting on performances for them so I know how much the players would have missed it and I know how much the fans missed it too and we're two or three games into the new season as well. A lot of cha change in terms of players and things around the club. I mean, what, what have you made of the start so far and how, how do you hope it's going to end? Yeah, it's obviously there's lots of new players come in, which can take some time to gel, um, but really excited about the amount of young players coming through. Um, and, and Matt Jay's really developed in the last couple of years and seems to be leading the team really well. So really confident about, about the season and hopefully we can make a good push for, for the playoffs and who knows, maybe that top three, but I think obviously we're a young side, so there's going to be ups and downs along the way, but I'm sure that um, it'll end in a positive manner, hopefully come the end of the season. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming in to see us and good luck in Barbados. Not that you'll need it. <laughs> thanks very much. Cheers, guys.